Hi and welcome to this fifth video in a series that I'm making to answer some of the frequently asked questions around EFT tapping. Um, my name is Jenny Clift, I'm a violinist and an EFT coach and I'm on a mission to get EFT tapping out to as many musicians and stage performers as possible. So in the first four videos we've looked at what is EFT, um, a little bit about its history, about how I came to use it and how it's helped me as a musician especially, and then the science behind EFT. And in today's video, I want to answer a question which is very important because it's often a sticking point for many people. And that is the question, why does EFT focus on the negative? So we're gonna look at some of the reasons behind this and see if, especially if you're the kind of person who, who doesn't like to look at neg or think negatively, just to understand a little bit why this is and how it can be beneficial on a temporary basis. We're not talking about staying in the negative for the rest of, rest of eternity. So one idea is the, the analogy that we use very often is like cleaning up a mess. Imagine you're, you go into your kitchen, maybe you had a party the night before and it is looking horrible. So you go in, but you just cannot bear to look at it. It's so disgusting. So you sort of get a cloth and you start feeling around and you can see how inefficient this would be and how you wouldn't really get in there into the corners. Now, it's a little bit the same. We're going to be looking at the negative emotions, which are actually there, but in a safe place. And while we're doing so, we're tapping, which is going to bring down the anxiety and clear the energy behind it. Um, definitely in cases of where there's very toxic stuff or, or trauma going on, then there are gentle, what we call gentle techniques to deal with this. So we can, um, so we don't necessarily have to go straight for it. it it's, it's a very careful technique in that it just allows you to deal what can be dealt with at that moment. Um, another thing, which, and this for me was very important, was the whole idea of acknowledging and honouring your feelings. Now, I believe um, that, that often as children, we're not really allowed to show our feelings very clearly. So there are some feelings which adults or other people really find hard to deal with which are, for example, anger. So how many times as a child were you told to go to your room because you're shouting or you're creating? Or, but even something like sadness is often hard for other people to, to deal with. And so very often, you'll be often to, offered a sweetie or cheer up, dear, could get worse, you know, or, well. <laughs> and so we very often, our emotions, we're not really allowed to feel them. And so again, this is, I use the words, I honor this feeling, I acknowledge this feeling very often. And I find with clients that very often at the end, they say, this is the first time I've actually said that out loud. I was thinking it, but I've never said it. And the experience, excuse me, the experience can be very cathartic and very, yeah, very healing and you can move through it. Another um, thing is the physiological and energetic levels. Uh, as we are tapping on the points, we are bringing down the cortisol, which is the stress hormone. And we're doing so, first of all, in a, in a safe place. And we are using words which will ju juxtapose, if you like, what is going on for us and accepting and loving ourselves and this is one of the parts of the um of the eft process which i find the most important the most powerful at the beginning we say this we normally say this sentence even though and then the issue i love and accept myself completely now sometimes people have a hard time saying that and in which case we can always change that part of the sentence we can say I'm okay right now, or if you're working with a child, for example, you could say, and I'm a great kid. There are different ways of doing it, so it's acceptable to, to the people involved. 
And, um, but we have this idea of self-love, of self-acceptance, also self-forgiveness. You can say, I forgive myself completely. And it gives a message to our brain that, yeah, even though this is going on, or I did this, or I feel this, this, I love and accept myself completely. So all of these kind of things. And yeah, very often we've moved through the negative. We've it's really looked at it, acknowledged it, and cleared it. And then we get to a positive tapping around at the end and, and, and finish feeling really great. But I still maintain that if you started there, the effects wouldn't be as lasting. So try it and see and see how it works for you. I'd love to know as well in the comments below. Thanks for watching.